All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. All right. Good morning <laughs> again. And welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we're a webinar, some people will call us, a webcast, an online show. Um, the terminology is up for debate, and some people have strong feelings about it. Um, I don't care <laughs> what you want to call us. Whatever you call us, we're here live every Wednesday morning online at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show, and it is posted onto our website afterwards. And I will show you at the end of today's show where those the recordings and everything will be. We post both um, recording of the show, um, any presentations, documents, whatever um, materials anybody has that they've brought along, um, and links to any websites that might be um, mentioned throughout the show. So you have access to all of that afterwards. Um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with any of your colleagues, um, friends, neighbors, family, anybody who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have here. Um, they're welcome to join us on Wednesday mornings or go back and look at our archives. Um, I was just being asked actually this morning how far back our archives go back until the very beginning of the show. We started this in um, 2009. So we have everything on there going on our YouTube account. Um, all of our recordings are there. So um, some of the archive shows may be um, outdated <laughs> as far as the content or information, of course. But so just keep that in mind. Look at the dates. But it's all out. You know, we're librarians, so it's all out there for archival purposes, of course, and, and will remain out there. Um, and we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, um, readings, mini training sessions, demos of different services or products. Basically our only criteria is that it is library related, something libraries are doing, something that may, um, some new thing that may be of use to them, uh, sometimes some out of the box thinking. So um, if you look at some of our topics and you're like, eh, I don't get it, stick with us. Everything will all have something to do with libraries. That's my goal. <laughs> That's the only criteria that we have here on the show. Um, we do have uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff, since we are the ones hosting the show, that do some presentations here. Um, so that will sometimes be more um, Nebraska-centric specifically, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. To my left, um, um, from Lincoln City Libraries, I've got Jodine Placeman here from, and I don't even put your titles on here, I'm sorry. I didn't that's okay. Want, <laughs> I just put your names on. I just realized I didn't look up and put any titles. So tell, why don't you introduce yourself then so I can get this right. Okay. <laughs> I'm Jodine Glazeman. I'm the branch manager at Walt Branch Library. Right. And Vicki Clark, are, I'm the librarian Vicky. at Walt Branch Library. Okay. And there was a third, um, there will be a third name you'll see on here too, Leanne Harvey, who um, is unable to join us this morning. That's correct. She's ill today, so. But she's part of the team, so yes, <laughs> she is. Make Absolutely. sure you know she's involved. Um, and they've got a presentation here, which, as they were also mentioning earlier, you might not know what the heck it is based on this title. Elemental <laughs> B. It's about the alphabet. No, um, but um, I actually attended this session of theirs at our um, state library conference, Nebraska Library Association and School Librarians Association joint conference last October. Um, and it was a really cool program that they did. How it evolved and and Came what it is was originally what it is now. So I'm going to come to slide to share it with even more people. So I'm just going to hand it over to you guys to okay. explain what that is. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you, Krista. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to start here talking a little bit about this. And um, first of all, LMNOP um, is Library Moms Night Out program, and this was something that we started at Walt. Um, and it was branded specifically to Walt. And so um, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we are going to talk about how um, we use community engagement to transfer that from being a mom's program to a maker's program. Um, and how this was a, a low tech program um, or no tech program. Mm -hmm. And then how we wanted to inspire creativity among the people who were attending this program how it transferred from moms to makers to makerspace. And I did some digging around this morning um, mm -hmm. online, and I didn't realize that makerspaces are something that have been around in some format for decades. Oh, sure. 
and they just the word yeah, yeah. and um, you know they've been real popular probably for about the last 10 years but mm -hmm. they have been around um, since the 60s as far as I could find mm -hmm. um, so that was really interesting for me so mm -hmm. um, something really to get into um, so mm -hmm. talking about LMNLP Library Moms Night Out um, there we are <laughs> Um, our original plan was that this was something that could happen um, as a downtime for moms in our library. Um, it would be after hours on a Friday night. Um, moms would hang out, no kids. We would have a craft activity for them or a learning activity, something where they could bond with each other. And um, they could browse the library without kids. They could go on the adult, adult side, side of the library. Right. So right. The kids' side of the library. <laughs> exactly. It would be a time for they didn't them. Have to monitor anybody. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so, as far as activities for them, um, this sort of grew out of a summer reading event that we had. And um, this was the very first. Um, program that we had, and this was actually pre-LMNLP. This was what inspired us. And um, we had a do-it-yourself home and beauty program. And um, this was presented by actually Vicki's sister. Mm -hmm. And she came in and um, talked to people about how to create cleaning products for your home, um, different types of health products. I mm -hmm. forget what all. Oh, lots of lots of hacks, basically yeah. life hacks. Mm -hmm. I've and heard a lot of people doing this, trying to, to be healthier, make their mm -hmm. own, without, make their own laundry soap, make yeah. their own, uh, or cheaper even yep. than buying yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. And this, we had a really good turnout for this program. Um, we were actually quite surprised at how many people came, um, stuck around, um, kept kept Mary, our presenter, in the room afterwards talking to her about different <laughs> things. For all the recipes. She yes. had a handout of all the recipes, but we had mm -hmm. people after the program coming back and asking for more handouts. Wow. Mm -hmm. And asked when something like this would be offered again. Mm -hmm. And so this really was the impetus for um, our mom's night program. And so for our first Library Mom's Night Out program, we brought Mary back. and. For our activity, she taught people how to um, do a shoe redo, mm -hmm. and um, we did. It was um, like decoupage on the shoe. Mm -hmm. Take a shoe, redo it in in whatever way you wanted to do. So now she has Star Wars shoes. Yes. Yeah, so awesome. <laughs> um, another activity we did with the moms for the Library Moms Night Out program was art journaling. Mm -hmm. And Leanne. yeah, so Leanne who could not be here today. <laughs> is the left is on the left in that picture there, and so um, we invited um, moms in uh, for a Friday night evening, and staff taught them how to do um, art journaling, and this is um, different from the writing journaling. They were able mm -hmm. to be creative, and the key with this was to be creative in any way. There was no wrong way to be creative. Um, and this was a program that we offered a couple of different times. And what we learned here in doing this was that we were not getting just moms. Yeah. We were getting um, men. We were getting families. Um, all ages. All ages were coming to these events. And that everybody was interested in, in these different types of creative programs and wanted to see what was available at the library. And so this was something that we paid attention to as we offered these programs. And um, this gentleman here in the upper left, um, he was really cute. He was very interested in patterns, um, very into the program, and um, it was just—it was really fun to work with him because he was not our target audience. Yeah. But he—he he was very much into the art journaling program. And just um, some more pictures of the journal, art, the art journaling, um, and just a wide variety of people who came. Mm -hmm. This is another program where they. Asked when you're going to do this again. Are you yeah. going to do this regularly? We need this more. Yeah, yes. This, more. Mm -hmm. this is an example here um, of another program, Keep Your Car Running, aka Friday Night Motor Moms, which I think is a right. Um, <laughs> this is a program that I especially really liked here. Um, we had 
some people that we knew came in and taught us um, different things about what you need to know about keeping your car running, keeping mm -hmm. it going, um, how you, when should you get a tune-up, um, when how how low can you get your tires tread before you need to replace them, mm -hmm. things like that that were asked mm -hmm. in a um, non-competitive environment where anybody could ask a question and feel empowered knowing the things that that they um, needed to know about cars. So we had a, about an hour-long class inside. You can see all the notes there in the back on the whiteboard. Then we went outside and actually looked at the car to see the different things that we needed to know about what we could do to keep our car running. Um, did they bring I, along a car to look at We did. You your own? <laughs> uh, we had Leanne's car actually was oh, okay. pulled up in front of the library there. Um, and what we didn't realize when we planned this particular one was that, you know, in September it got dark a lot earlier than oh, we expected. Yeah. So we had to put a floodlight on. So anybody who drove by, it kind of looked like a car shop, you know, <laughs> car, parking lot or something like that. So, but it was, it was fabulous. This was an, an excellent program. Um, one time in particular, uh, we did do this one twice, two different times, once in the summer. Um, and I had talked to a woman who had just stumbled in because we were open at the time. We weren't open to the public, but our program was going on. She came in just to get books for her grandchild, and I said, well, why don't you stay for this program? And she had the best reward from that. She's like, I needed to know this information. I needed to find I out this. Know I needed didn't even know I needed Didn't even know I needed this, but I'm so very, very thankful that I got this information. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit more about um, the things we learned that people told us here in a few minutes there. Another program that we did was called finger knitting. So this is another low-tech program that we had where you really learned how to knit using your mm -hmm. fingers. And you can see a lot of people there enjoying that program. Um, go ahead there. And here's some more examples of finger knitting right there. Um, in, intergenerational, this is a grandma with her granddaughter here mm -hmm. as well. They made it, and there's my mom. She came, and she was very excited because she doesn't wear jewelry, and she actually wore that, and she was very happy to. Um, one of the great things about this particular program is it's a skill people learned, and they came home with an actual product. Right. Yeah. So they felt really, um, really empowered by that. Another one that we have here, um, we did a yoga class in the evening. So this is in one of our meeting rooms. Um, beautiful, serene example. So you didn't have to pay to go to a class. You could come to a free yoga class in the library. Mm -hmm. Is that a regular one too now, or was um, that just we a one-off? Would, that particular one was a one-off. Mm -hmm. um, in other branches of our library, they have had people who have had to um, yoga instructors who've had to work on their training to become yoga instructors. Oh, so they will nice. offer a short series, like six or eight weeks, mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's one that has been very well received. It's a nice connection to make, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's also been yoga classes for children that mm -hmm. we've had. So we have not had it regularly, but boy, we'd sure like to because yeah. people would come to that. Oh, yeah. Another one, this was a favorite too. We um, made a connection with the UNL Extension Office, and Alice Henneman came and talked to us about make ahead freezer meals. So we're thinking about um, families, moms who are all busy who need to make their meals ahead of time, and she gave us tips and pointers on how to do that. And of course, whenever we have these programs, not only do we have the program, but we go and collect a set of books that people can check out, have Related. those available there. Mm -hmm. So of course, there's tons of make-ahead meal cookbooks there. and There would have been yoga books and knitting books and everything mm -hmm. out for all the other previous programs as well. And you can see on the bottom of that poster our branding, our mm -hmm. logo that we created. Right for it. It says LMNOP on a bookshelf mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I saw that one of the other previous ones, maybe the first one is also the, the original one, related to your um, summer reading program, the adult summer reading yes, program. Yes, that is correct. Right. Yeah. Right, it did. This one was a lot of fun too. Like yoga, we had a Zumba class. Um, this was a person that taught it that um, Jessica Dinger that Leanne knew. She was a Zumba fitness instructor, and what was fun about that is we cleared out the book displays in the center of the library and did Zumba in the middle of the library. Oh, nice. now, of course, <laughs> these programs, um, in, in the beginning, LMNOP was after hours. We closed um, mm -hmm. closed at 6, and we started our program at 6.30 so people could have time to come in the evening, so you really weren't running into patrons while we were mm -hmm. doing Zumba. Yes, yeah, so, so in this case, that was, that was a little bit different, but that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Another one that we had here was organic gardening. We um, collaborated with crops of Lincoln, community crops of Lincoln. 
they have uh, run community gardens in town and have a lot of resources. A um, lot of people showing up, and this again is another example where we had husbands showing up at our mom's night. So we were like, well, maybe this is library mom's night out or library moms and men night out. <laughs> or what what, we what's, do our M? <laughs> what's our M here? Um, and so then the next day we had a continuation of the same theme where we had a seed swap day. We call this Motivate to Cultivate. Mm -hmm. And we had small workshops that we worked with props to present in the library. There were activities for children. They could make seed bombs. There were games. Mm -hmm. Plus, then people could bring in their seeds. And the crops community people brought in their seeds on the table. And you could just trade them, seed swaps. Mm -hmm. You could go home and then start your own seeds. And again, we had books to check out. Mm -hmm. So that was um, a really exciting program. We've done that a couple of times at the library also keep that going. And then next, one of our most fun <laughs> programs that we have had is called Franken Toys. Um, this did start out as a program that we did during a Teen Tech Week a few years back. Um, and Franken Toys basically is a re-engineering of toys. So you bring in, we asked for donations of toys, small stuffed animals, small plastic toys, and we gave the participants the permission to destroy to recreate. Mm -hmm. So um, people really had a hard time overcoming that obstacle <laughs> of here's a very cute little stuffed animal. We want you to cut it apart because that's not cut something. Its off. Cut, it's, yeah. off, <laughs> cut its ears off. Go to town. Do what you want with it. But basically, you find fun parts and you um, put them back together. You know, you'll be thinking of Toy Story. That's kind of what they did in Toy mm -hmm. Story. You know, but. Um, it's a way to expand your creativity, expand your thinking. What can you do with this? How can you make it different? How can you still make it lovable? And actually, we found that when people participated in this program, they created something and they developed an attachment to it. Ah. They really liked their little <laughs> thing. And if you look at the beginning of, um, we had a beginning slide here with our names on it. We each mm -hmm. identified with a Franken toy that we mm -hmm. had created there as well. Um, so this, we did start as a teen tech program, but we recreated it again in an LMNOP program. We've done it a couple of times. Um, and this we've actually also taken to a middle school and helped a middle school with this program. Oh, taken it on the road. That's taken cool. it on yeah. the road, just up the street there. So um, we've done it several times in our library, and we've really kind of gone all out with it. You can see we've got our... Um, mad scientist gear <laughs> yes. going on it, but um, this is definitely a program that we've had a great time with in our LMNOP. And with the um, taking it to the middle school, the thing we found that really helped with um, getting the kids to the point of being able to do the destruction mm -hmm. before the recreation was taking a toy and asking them to look at how many parts could you make of this. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what could you take apart, and what could each? How many parts do you have to work with? And when they could visualize taking that animal apart yeah. in their head, then they were okay getting to that deconstruction <laughs> part and figuring out how to re-engineer it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it was that it's okay to do this. I'm sure they've been told by their parents, "Don't destroy you. Don't. Destroyed your toy. Oh, right. You know, right. You're gonna get scolded for that. Yeah. Put it on the but, shelf. Keep it nice. And yeah. We're, right. we're yeah. telling them to rip it apart <laughs> in right. the library, no less. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> encouraging that cre creativity yeah. and that engineering. Right. Mm -hmm. And the moms had a great time with it. We st yeah. we did it close to Halloween. You oh know? yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. here, go go. How about it? That was great. Another one that we have done here too is um, a program that this was really exciting. This one is called Cook the Book. And we did this as an LMNOP, but we did it in conjunction with Hispanic Heritage Month, which mm -hmm. is something that Walt celebrates mm -hmm. every year. Um, what we did is we selected two cookbooks of Mexican Mexican cookbooks. We put them out on display at the library close to the circulation desk and we asked people to look through the books and then select a recipe and then we marked that with their name. This recipe is selected mm -hmm. and then we um, picked a date and we said recreate this recipe, bring it to the library on this date and it was basically a potluck of sharing this Hispanic food. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful. Everybody loves a potluck. Oh, yeah. It's a great, great mm -hmm. thing to do. And you always um, come together over sharing. But what was really fabulous about this particular program is that there was a young mom. She had brought her, um, her young son 
couple, he was probably three or so, but she also brought her mother. Her mother was a non-English speaker. They were mm -hmm. all from originally from Mexico. And mm -hmm. so she was excited and she brought awesome food. Oh yeah. And she then could talk to us about the differences in the regions in Mexico mm -hmm. on how different food was prepared. Oh sure. So not only did we have great food, we used library resources to prepare the food because the the um, recipes came from our books that people mm -hmm. could check out. We photocopied them and let them take that, so we kept the books there. Right. Yeah. And then we she sent them home. Lots of people needing to use this. Yes. Yeah. So we sure. sent them yeah. home with a copy of the recipe. Then we gave them a little cookbook of the recipes that were prepared in the library. But then they were able to talk to us about the different regional differences. And mm -hmm. this is this region uses corn tortillas, but this one uses flour tortillas, and right. this is the reason why. We were. Just thrilled. We, I mean, the, so she just came out of. You didn't know she didn't was, know she wasn't was planned. Mm -hmm. That's no. nice. That serendipity of that. The serendipity <laughs> you just of never that. know. Yeah. Yes. And they all said, "When are we doing this again? I want to do it with Italian food, and I want to yes, do it with Indian things. food." Yeah. And, yeah. So that is definitely another one that we will be doing at some mm -hmm. point in time because it was it was awesome with other cuisines. Other yeah. cuisines, more things to try. Okay, so all of these things have been a lot of different examples of the programs that we have done in our Library Moms Night Out program, LMNOP. But what we want to talk to you about now here is the things that we observed in doing this programming. Um, LMNOP started off with the programs that we thought people wanted to have, the things that we thought people wanted to do. And um, what we identified is that through talking with our patrons, conversing with the people who were there, we found out really what was important to them and how they would like to see our programming change and develop. Um, we observed, obviously we've mentioned this before, but that moms didn't really come to this programming in the evening after hours on a Friday to get downtime for themselves just to hang out in the library, which is one of the original concepts of the program. Mm -hmm. They came, they would come if there was something meaningful for them to come to. Mm -hmm. Uh, they would come if there was a program that enriched them, gave them something. Because, you know, if a mom's going to have downtime, she's probably not going to come to the library. <laughs> Unless there's a she reason for it. to do nothing. We tried, we tried to and not think. And she, if she while. does that, she's probably going to go sit in her easy chair somewhere and read yeah. her own book. But, so we, we, we gave that a whirl. We tested the waters. We wanted to see what was going on with that. Um, but what was really important for us were program evaluations. Um, and we want to talk to you a little bit about that right now. Um, in the beginning, we always handed out an evaluation. You can see our logo right up there on the top, Elemental P. What did you think? And we asked several questions. How did you hear about this program? And instead of leaving blank space for them to fill it in, we gave them prompts to see all the places that that we thought could have been options. So flyer in the library, Facebook, Storytime, library website, library staff, or other. How would you like to see the library used on a mom's night out? Attend a learning program, participate in a craft program, quiet shelf browsing, free alone time, visiting with others, visiting with friends or others. By far, it was I would attend a program or participate in a craft program. Pretty much always. Nobody really mm -hmm. wanted to come here for quiet Just alone time. Mm -hmm. We would never know that unless we passed out these yeah. evaluations. What topics for short programs or craft projects interest you? And we pretty much heard a lot of the same things over and over again. Um, would you prefer a short program with a craft or more free time in the library or a longer program? So a short program and a long time to be by yourself or would you like a longer program? Pretty much for, for the most part we always heard longer program. <laughs> and then in the beginning we wanted to know what time would be good for you to start and what time would be good for you to end because um, our original concept was Friday, our after hours, we closed at 6 on a Friday, so mm -hmm. would it be better if we started right at 6, would it be better if we started at 7, does it affect people mm -hmm. with their dinner schedule, right. yeah. you know, what kind of what kind of issues do you have, how late is too late for you, how early is too early for you to go back home if the kids are still awake, we wanted to know those kind of things really, you just don't really know. So, um, those are the kind of evaluations that we did in the beginning. We also continued on with evaluations later on that asked a little different questions. Um, tell us what you thought about this program. This one says, um, I really appreciated this info. I learned a lot of important information. The leaders were great. Well, that's good information to know to see whether this was a valuable thing for people to come to or not. 
How did you hear about the program again? Same kind of questions. How would you like to use the library in a mom's night out? We're still asking the same question because we still want to know from a new group of people. What other topics for short programs or craft projects interest you? We really, really liked this one. This was an evaluation after the car care program. Mm -hmm. We got really good feedback from this. This particular one says, other info sessions similar to this one that are related to stereotypical male information. I just recently mm -hmm. lost my dad who took care of everything, um, like my car, and now I find myself needing to make these important decisions. So what we found from this, and this was not the only comment like this from this particular program, we found that we really were hitting a need mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. um, the library is a source of information and that information isn't always in books, sometimes that information needs mm -hmm. to be taught to people. Yeah. And so this was a teaching element that really fit a need for this person. And that is what inspired us right there. This program, we also got a thank you note in the mail afterwards. Oh, nice. <laughs> OK. Um, so what we've been talking about is community engagement and um, how this program evolved and grew is based upon um, the engagement that we did. And um, that is we were intentional about looking to our community and we tried to make our decisions um, based upon this quote here, which is, we asked what mattered to our patrons rather than just assuming um, what we thought they needed mm -hmm. for our programs. And so the, the concept of community engagement traces its roots to community benefit. And mm -hmm. so we really tried to think about that as we grew this program and we, basically turned outward and we were very intentional about basing these choices on um, creating change and changing our programs that would benefit our patrons and um, have a greater impact and make us more relevant to our community. Um, and so we um, did that mm -hmm. by we were very focused on talking to our patrons. Mm -hmm talking to the people who attended our programs. Um, we had those surveys. We were very cognizant of making sure the staff in our building talked to our patrons. Sometimes that's a hard leap for some of them to it really is. interact. Right. It is. If they are used to just um, doing the checkout at the desk mm -hmm. or answering questions, um, we, we need to make sure they, they know about our programs and right. can make, make those um, conversations. We made small quarter-sized um, announcements of every program and have those right mm -hmm. at the checkout desk. If you have Let's people see. who are checking oh, yeah. out books related mm -hmm. to this material at all, hand them out and say, here, this is for you. And sometimes it's that personal invitation that a mm -hmm. person needs that says, here, you might like this program. Yeah. That will, you know, because they Make might the see the, yeah. They'll, yeah, they'll see the poster, but they might not have that personal invitation to come to the right. program. Mm -hmm. Right. And you build those relationships with people, and as they are more comfortable, what we find is as they are more comfortable talking to you, mm -hmm. you will have longer conversations and get to know them. And then that's how you find out things that they can offer you. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we have gotten some of our presenters. Um, yeah. And actually, then when they present for you, you learn more of what they can offer you. And so that's really helped us which we'll talk about here. Snowball effect. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> We've gotten um, free, pre free program presenters by doing that and developing those community relationships. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, here, this is basically what I was just saying here, mm -hmm. that we, we show interest in our patrons and they feel valued mm -hmm. when we ask them to provide a service for us or pre present a program, they know they are important to us and that they are important to our community. And so some of the programs that we've had by doing this is we've had sewing programs, which we'll talk about. And we actually are going to have a couple coming up here. We have a woman who's offered to do a knitting program for us mm -hmm. and then a paper piece piecing program. And so those are coming up. Mm -hmm. And we would not have had any of those without engaging our patrons in the building and finding out what they have available to offer to us. Okay, so moms to makers. How this transition occurred is we knew 
just by interacting with our patrons and observing them and talking to the people who are at our mom's program. We really needed to become flexible with days and times. Mm -hmm. We needed to be more than just a Friday night program after hours that was limited just to moms. So um, our program happened during the week, during the day, could be at any any point. Even in time. though you call a library mom's night out, anybody was showing up. Yes, they didn't, they didn't care. They did not called. care. <laughs> And That's so awesome. that was a big clue yeah. to us. <laughs> because, it, because it became program driven. Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to go to the program, you know, it doesn't awesome. matter. Yeah. Yep. It's whatever the topic was. Yeah. And really, if somebody shows up and says, I'm not a mom, can I come? You know, we you didn't just we didn't turn yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> so our M changed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and along with that, we expanded the type of program. And that's where we got into the collaboration. And like Vicki said, we went away from the people weren't here to browse the library. They were here for the activity, mm -hmm. for the program. And we started talking about um, life hacks or skill building, the tricks, the shortcuts that people wanted to improve um, efficiencies in their lives. You know, like, like people will talk about, oh, I can use this post-it note to get crumbs out of the keyboard. Well, <laughs> what are some other things that we can teach people to, to make their lives easier? You know, like um, the shoe program, we mm -hmm. might offer something along those lines of how do you waterproof your shoes with beeswax. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people are interested in those types of things and we can be the place to provide that programming. Um, one thing that uh, we did um, is look to see where our resources could come from. And we have a group of genealogists that meets every mm -hmm. Sunday in our library. Mm -hmm. And regularly they have their guest speakers and programmers coming in. And at one time they had um, a program on calligraphy and she came in and talked and discussed about calligraphy but then also did a hands-on calligraphy class and what that evolved into is a regular eight-week class in our library which was awesome and she came and oh. she was over 90 years old and she would come in the winter and oh, wow. come every nice. once I think it was on Monday mornings mm -hmm. and she would set up and she had her handouts and there was a regular group of people who were so very excited about that mm -hmm. and they started in the well it was in the fall I think it was close to Christmas was it just before Christmas I think it was mm -hmm. and they um, were working on Christmas cards learning how to mm -hmm. do hand lettering to do your Christmas cards but what was also really neat about this particular program is that there was a homeschool family that decided to attend. Mm -hmm. It was a Monday morning and mm -hmm. so it worked in their schedule. Mm -hmm. And so you had a lot of retired citizens who had learned the Palmer method of handwriting which was similar to this calligraphy yeah. and so they were very excited to participate and then the homeschool family. So it was a really neat mix that you could see. Mm -hmm. And that developed from talking to the genealogy people. This is one of my favorite programs. Um, one day I was um, working at the youth desk and I saw a person that looked familiar to me and I said, I think I'm pretty sure I know that she's the person that um, works in the sewing department at the county fair when my oh. kids take their 4-H items mm -hmm. into the county fair. And I said, I wonder what she's doing here. Well, she would come regularly and bring her grandchildren to the library. And I said, I know she knows a lot about sewing. So I'm going to go over and ask her about these classes. I said, well, would you come in and talk to a group of people about just your sewing machine, that sewing machine that's sitting in your closet mm -hmm. that you've never used that you might be quite afraid of. I just want people to get to know their sewing machine. And she goes, oh yeah, I love that. I teach <laughs> classes like that all the time. And, and it just kind of got excited and excited and excited. And then she says, and you know, I make cards too, <laughs> which was the best because that is another example of how once you start engaging mm -hmm. people, you're going to find out more about their talents. Well, this has really turned into something great. This particular program, we had 17 people who hauled in their machines. We oh, set they brought up, their own. They wow. brought their mm -hmm. own machine in because we wanted them to become familiar with what they had and right. what they had sure. at home. And so she would, first she gave about an hour long discussion of the basics. This is the basics of a machine and this is what you've got and these are the different kinds of threads and this is when you would use it for this and that and the other mm -hmm. thing. And then she would go around and she had different weights of fabric that she had brought along with her so right. that people could sew on different kinds of fabric and feel what that felt like differently with their machines. And she had so much knowledge with this that she could say, well, you need to do this with your machine and you need to do that with your machine. It right. was going to be different models. Everything's yeah. different. Some loaded, the bobbins loaded differently in different machines and she mm -hmm. could show you how to do that. And we had people 
leaving who actually used the word life changing <laughs> in their in their wow. response. So they were very That's excited awesome. about this. Um, it brought people's it brought usefulness to something that they had at their home that was just dead. And so um, the other thing that people were asking for then is like, okay, great, I know how to use my machine now. When are you having classes at the library? Mm -hmm. When are we going to be doing projects at the library? And so um, we were very excited about this. The one thing that is great about this particular program um, and several of the ones that we've done before is that there is a zero cost in this. This is um, a program that you can do that doesn't cost you anything. And sometimes right. those life empowering mm -hmm. things are just like that. All right, so what is a makerspace? Um, it's a do-it-yourself space where people can learn to gather, create, invent, and learn. And so for our purposes, we have sewing machines, knitting needles, we've got card games, we have crafts, um, we have little robots, um, we have all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's more than just the hard technology. Um, and we say that because if you we want our makerspace to be inclusive. Um, so making, many times it's so people think it's all about tech and right, it's right. not my thing, so I'm not even going to pay right. attention to it. And making is for more than just geeks. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we want it to be inclusive. We want it to have anything where people can be creative. Um, it's for all ages. Um, it needs to be fun. Anything where people can learn and create something. And the other important thing that should be remembered, and we really do encourage this, is there is no wrong way to make. Mm -hmm. It's it's not something where we want somebody there hovering and saying, no, you should do this. No, why don't you do this? Um, however somebody is making, it's correct for them. And that, that's how we get the self-empowerment with makerspaces. Um, people gain confidence when they're in a makerspace. Um, and, and that just leads to um, people feeling um, a sense of individuality and really being able to do things on their own. And um, one thing we see is when people are taking things apart and putting them back together, they gain um, knowledge of how things work and how the world works. They are able to um, be producers rather than just sitting back and being consumers. Mm -hmm. um, they're an active part of the world. Um, something that Vicki and I talk about is honing the hack. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what we mean by that is instead of just instead of just being a consumer and taking what you get, you are able to tweak it and make it work for you, adapt it, adapt it to what you need personally, um, and make it more efficient in your daily activities. Um, so like instead of just taking something out of the box and using it, you're thinking outside of the box. What else can I do with it? Exactly. Yeah, right. you Besides make, what it's really made for. Right. You right. make the tool work better mm -hmm. for you. And um, this is something that we're hearing a lot these days, mm -hmm. is that creativity mm -hmm. is just as important as literacy. Um, really, it, it's problem solving. It's, it's mm -hmm. how, how are you going to succeed? You need to be creative. So what we began our presentation talking to you about was um, at Walt Library in particular, what our LMNOP program was and how that has changed from just being a mom's night out to a maker's night out or a maker's day out, really. Um, and so then there's this trend in the library world going towards maker spaces, but you mm -hmm. don't have to have a dedicated space. You don't have to have a dedicated room for a maker space. You don't have to have high technology for a maker space. Even though those things are wonderful, you don't have to have them. Mm -hmm. And we came to learn part of that through our programming that we did. We, um, along the way, found other things that encourage creativity in the same manner. Um, and we kind of think of these things as pseudo maker space type mm -hmm. items. Um, we had, um, a, we'll tell you here about a book art display, Chalk the Walks, and a dome program that we did. So the first one, uh, we had, we have a high school right next door to us, Southwest High School, mm -hmm. and the art teacher approached us 
and she had been buying books from our book nook, which is a little book sale shelf that we have. She'd been buying some really nice hardback books and then took them back to her art students and they did this fabulous book art. Some of them, uh, you can see up in the top right, there's a tree, a 3D tree mm -hmm. that's cut into the book with uh, painted tips. Some are folded. There's a ship in the back. There's a ship in the wow. back. It's yeah, actually made from the book pages and folded and then glued in. So there's a couple different processes that are done here. And she brought the students' artwork and we displayed it in the library. And mm -hmm. oh, you would not believe the buzz about that. <laughs> I mean, you can see them in yeah. the picture like this, but when you see them in real life and you know the high school kids made it, it's very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. So then people were like, wow, can I do that? Or wow, I can't believe you even did that, that yeah. somebody actually created that, and can I do that? Um, patrons loved it and they wanted to do more. Um, it was also just very inspirational to see art being produced. Another thing that we did, this was um, a program that we did during summer reading. We had a structural engineer come in, um, Jason Solter, you can see him down there in the bottom picture. And first of all, he started the day teaching kids about the strength of a triangle. And they, up at the, the left-hand picture up there, you can see they made many geodesic domes. Mm -hmm. And he taught them how to put them together and the engineering principles behind that. And then he brought in a kit with these, um, with these actual rods, plastic rods, that the kids put together then, and they, you can see the same structure in there, and you can see all the kids under the dome right there. <laughs> um, this was a fabulous program. We left that dome up all summer long that people could look at it. Had the, had the uh, paper dome in there mm -hmm. as well. So this was a making program that the kids got a lot of hands-on work with. Um, everybody could see it, everybody could enjoy it. That was another example of a, a makerspace type program that we did that didn't take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to have anything dedicated and it took no machinery for that. This is another one of my favorites. This is called Chalk the Walks and it is mm -hmm. sponsored by somebody from a group called the Joy Team. I just found them once when I was on Facebook. I saw a posting that somebody else had that had posted mm -hmm. and I thought well that is really interesting. It's only been around for a few years. It's the third Tuesday in August and all you really need to do is have a bucket of chalk and a sidewalk. That's it. Um, their tagline is that it spreads joy and optimism and inspiration through the magical power of sidewalk chalk. We've done this a couple times. Um, the first time I think we were the only ones that did it and then after that or maybe one other group joined us, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And then last year, I think we had four branch libraries in Lincoln do it, mm -hmm. and put out a big sign just explaining what it is and let people go to town. And it was just wonderful. You know, Every hour you'd go out and you'd see another beautiful drawing or some positive message. That's the only requirement is just make it positive. Mm -hmm. And that's really a beautiful way to make something on your sidewalk and then it washes away. It cleans up itself. Yeah. Cleans up itself. <laughs> you know, all you have to do is make sure it's not a, well actually the first day we first time we ever tried it, it was rainy in the morning. And so mm -hmm. because we decided we were going to do this, we laid black paper down mm -hmm. in the aisles of the youth section. And, and that's we, what that you do that in the upper left. top one. Yep. Right. Yep. So it was raining in the morning, so we made fake sidewalks in the library and had people do sidewalk chalk in the library. And then when it dried up in the afternoon, we took it back outside. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of a lot of fun. But that's another example of being very low tech, and it's probably one of the cheapest makerspace items that you could do. So if anybody wants to join it, it's the third Tuesday in August. So makerspaces in a library, really? <laughs> yes, and um, we still get asked about this. In fact, the question just came up again yesterday about were makerspaces really appropriate to have in a library? And yes, yes. Um, they are, <laughs> um, because libraries have always been about learning, information. Um, libraries mm -hmm. already have the resource materials, such as the books and the internet for patrons to reference. Mm -hmm. right. um, so having those resources in the library. It's a perfect fit to just add the tools that go along with them. Mm -hmm. And um, because libraries are the place for equitable free access, this is just a great fit mm -hmm. for people who don't have access or the resources to purchase those tools to be able to come use them at the library. So this perfect fit. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> libraries have always done programs of any sort, bringing in authors or anything like that. and 
it's just another program. It's exactly. a different way yeah. to share information. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a little more interactive. Exactly. exactly. It's a different way to learn. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so here um, um, with the LMNOP, that um, is a Walt Branch specific thing for us. And then um, we started with some creativity and some making at our branch. And then uh, Lincoln City Libraries got a grant and we added uh, makerspace items to our entire system. And through that, we branded um, that whole concept, concept mm -hmm. at our system as Link In at LCL. And Link stands for Learn, Innovate, Engineer, and Create. And so this here happens to be a poster for uh, a pop-up makerspace that was held at our gear branch. Mm -hmm. And this is just showing you what that branding is that we've done for our whole makerspace concept. Um, and so the makerspaces at Lincoln City Libraries, through that grant, we have a big 3D printer at our central library. We have two smaller 3D printers at our quadrant branches, and then various tech and non-tech items that can be checked out by our branches for programming or mm -hmm. taken to um, outreach events. Mm -hmm. And um, it's nice that a lot of that is portable; that it's not it that you're is. saying you don't have to have this room that everything is just stationary, stuck in, and yes. everyone has to go mm -hmm. there for it. That you can go with it anywhere. Right. Right couple of the items that we have, um, we saw such a great response from our uh, Get to Know Your Sewing Machine program that we put in the grant to purchase four sewing machines. So we mm -hmm. actually got four sewing machines, um, some staff have been trained on those, and then when we've done subsequent sewing programs, either you can bring your own machine or you can borrow the one that the library has, and that has been very successful. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a poster from one of our first programs where we actually did a class with the sewing machine other than just learning about your machine this was our first actual project it was called learn to sew a bendy bag and it's kind of a a little mm -hmm. square bag with a zipper that goes around two sides there and Kath who had done our first program was very she's the one that picked out the pattern and was very willing to come in and teach it and actually she got quite excited and she's an awesome presenter so we're very grateful and thankful to have her come for that um, and she keeps coming up with other ideas she goes well how about we do one of these and I'm like <laughs> Kath as long as you're on board we're on board so Absolutely. that's that's great. And how much of the materials is in this case? Slide. What we did is um, there. You can see kind of in the middle. It says "Ask that's Staff" right. yeah. for um, information. And so pretty much we said gave you a list of what to bring. Okay, so, so ahead of time, yeah, you pick out whatever fabric you want. In this to make case, your bag yeah, out of. there's a pattern to purchase from a local um, a local mm -hmm. uh, sewing store, and then they told you exactly what to purchase mm -hmm. from that, and then they said bring your sewing machine, or you can reserve one mm -hmm. from ours. Don't just show up and hope to get it. You just put your name down and make sure if yeah, you need one of our machines. Yeah, a certain number. Yeah. yeah, so you can have one of those machines, and so we have a, a nice kind of like little recipe list of things you need to bring along. Yeah, because someone actually had a question too about that. Um, uh, the previous uh, flyer that was for the gear bench one um, for the play date with dot and dash is there do you have loaner tablets available for those who don't have their own yes for those kind of things yes yeah. there are iPads that mm -hmm. people can use yes okay. so people and, can bring their own or and they would say something like this too the similar thing I guess that we have some but yeah, and then what, time we, or, what yeah. we did find is even though we said that and had it available and most people got that information because it would be a pre-register situation where they would call the library and we would keep a list of everybody mm -hmm. and then we um, either email it to them or if they were in the library we would give them a hard copy of what to bring. Mm -hmm. You would have people who would show up who wouldn't have it or they wouldn't have everything they need. So mm -hmm. we did find, um, we have asked for um, donations uh, for supplies in certain mm -hmm. cases. When we had our art journaling programs in the past, we'd say, right. um, does anybody have scrapbook material that they don't want? And boom. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you have these people who have this great, beautiful stuff that they don't want to keep anymore but don't know how to move on. Right. So that's another wonderful way to get resources for your library without purchasing them. Same thing with fabric. People who are crafters usually have some great supplies left over that they don't I know what to do. I have tons of fabric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? Made so. a costume or made something. Yeah, and right. Then, well, now the extra pieces, and sometimes I use it for something new, right. and most time it just keeps adding and adding, adding to my pile. Exactly. And we have learned, too, that for future grants, 
we know what to ask for to put in future grants, that mm -hmm. we should have a supply of fusible, fusible interface yes. on yeah. hand. Sure. You should have th extra Set a threat. zippers, yeah. Things mm -hmm. like that on hand. There were a lot of people who did not have a zipper right. for this. So I had actually bought extra for myself and my kids to work on, and mm -hmm. instead, we just let other people yes. use it. I said, if you've come and you don't have the resources, you're not going to get anything out of this, and I can do this later. Yeah. So go ahead and use this. So that's what we did in that case. And this this poster here is one of the first ones where LMNOP changes its logo mm -hmm. to the yeah. maker logo from the books logo. Right. Make library makers sign out. Make mm -hmm. do become is a tagline that we put on there. Awesome. So that's a great thing. Uh, this is a picture from an open house we had at Bennett Martin where we kind of showcased a lot of the things that were purchased for the uh, Makerspace grant. And here you can see a young lady with us learning how to sew. What we did is we had some strips of fabric and we just let them practice different stitches on the sewing machine and made their own bookmark. So that cool. was another thing that they did. And that was something that we just came up with, it's like, well, why don't you make a bookmark? <laughs> and it worked out really well, and then everybody got to try a bunch of different stitches on the on the fabric right there. Oh, and you can see here, um, a lot of our staff have these shirts that say libraries are more than books. Mm -hmm. Vicki and um, Shelly are mm -hmm. both wearing them there. Libraries change lives nice. is what it says mm -hmm. on the back. Libraries are more than books. Libraries mm -hmm. change the lives. Yeah. And here is another program that Kath did for us. We just did this one in um, February and March. This was learning how to applique. And mm -hmm. this was another great program because applique is kind of a, a concept that's hard to understand a little bit, but you have one piece of fabric, there's some fusible interfacing between it, it's, um, and then it's ironed onto another fabric. Under the gray fabric that you see there, there's some batting. So she taught us how to first put the batting together, how to get the top pieces put together, and then how to top stitch around it. So we had our choice of, well, you could do anything you wanted, but it was between mm -hmm. Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day. So she had these ideas here. Fabric. Yeah. yeah. And we did this two times. We did it um, like one Saturday, um, af Saturday morning, and then a Sunday, Sunday. afternoon. Mm -hmm. We did two, and then one time when we had a person who couldn't finish in one session, she came back to the next session and finished it up. But um, having these projects where people can come in and, and actually physically make something and take it away and take it home mm -hmm. has been really, really yeah. rewarding mm -hmm. for everyone. And then some of the other items that we have that we got with this grant, um, we got calligraphy sets, um, different types of crafts, craft supplies, and then construction like we hammers and saws and mm -hmm. different things like that. Um, Zentangle cards. Yeah, sure. Um, connectagons and zoobs, which are some things for our preschoolers. And then a lot of those things for the preschoolers, we um, Three different days at our branch after our story times, we had what we called creative play. And so um, we hauled into the story time rooms at the end of story, both our preschool and our toddler time story times. We had Zentangles, the Zoobs, the Connectagons. Um, There's a lot of games there. Card games. We had magnetic. Magnetiles. Magnetiles, magnetic, puzzles. alphabet, puzzles, um, matching matching card games. Yeah, felt. felt. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it was for kids. There was mom bonding time. We made coffee, mm -hmm. had apple juice, Just and then we had granola bars, bars. for a snack. Mm -hmm. and. I don't think anybody left story time. They, they don't stay <laughs> left. They all stayed. They to stayed for probably a full yeah. hour mm -hmm. in there. They played. We opened up both rooms. It was amazing. And everyone was like, well, what are you doing this again? Yes. <laughs> when are you doing this again? Are you going to do this, this every week? week? Every time? Yes. yes. <laughs> every time, but this is something we probably need to incorporate because mm -hmm. you would not believe how eclectic the room was, how mm -hmm. excited the yep. people were. And so this was basically a showcase time to show off the new things that we had purchased in our grant, mm -hmm. let people experience them, but I, I think we really need to bring them out regularly. Yeah. Because we, we know that yeah. children learn how to learn while they play. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, yeah. And while so this was, this was really important. And one of the key feedback pieces we heard from parents of really young children who aren't yet in preschool or mm -hmm. even in daycare, they're just at home, mm -hmm. is this was a great opportunity for those children to learn how to socialize. Oh, right. 
Mm -hmm. And so they really appreciated that. Um, we had a daycare there, and they wanted to know, where did you buy all of these? We want them <laughs> in our daycare. Um, and, and for the moms, it was great because they were out of story time so they could really interact with each other. Mm -hmm. It was that mom bonding time yeah. that we talked mm -hmm. about. Yeah, maybe and, with other moms. And we had children crying when it was over. We did. They did not want to leave. <laughs> crying in a good way. Crying. Yeah. yeah. So this is something. It was we, one of the most positive experiences, yes. I would say. We really need to do it again. Yes. Regularly. Regularly. <laughs> every time. We're changing how story time works every time now. That's right. It's all a creative play. <laughs> so that that was really wonderful. Or it just makes a, a long time that they will spend in the library. Yes. Yes. So. That was really good. Um, and then something else that we did um, in February was get creative with paper. And this we held the night before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And three of our staff came up with different ways to be creative with paper. Um, you could make um, flowers and vases from recycled paper. Um, we had uh, whoops, wreaths they could make. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. There were some other things. Was it art journaling pages? There were art journaling pages, yes. And so we had some families come in and do all of their valentines. Oh, picture frames was the other mm -hmm. thing. Make mm -hmm. some picture frames. Um, one of the cutest stories we had was there was a father and a son that came in together without mm -hmm. the mom. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to make valentines for the mom. And so the mm -hmm. little boy was making a valentine for the mom. And the dad decided since he was there, he would make flowers and a vase for the mom too. Oh, nice. And um, so he um, did that, but then the little boy <laughs> behind Dad's back, with some help from some of the other attendees, actually, it was Kath who oh, made the card. Yes, the made, sewing woman who made the cards yeah. made a card for Dad ah, without know. Dad knowing. <laughs> so that that was pretty That's cool, sweet. and it was just fun yeah. to watch the interaction of another attendee helping him make the card for Dad. Mm -hmm. So you really get that interaction between attendees at these creative yeah. programs. And that whole sense of community. Exactly. Of anybody who's in the library is exactly. community. Yeah. And that showed a lot of our donated paper products yes. this year too mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Um, we also have the little gizmo, the gizmos and gadgets and the makey makey. Mm -hmm. Someone has a question about some of the things you had. Um, I think going back when you were talking about the other things that you bought with the grant. Sure. Um, where do you, like, do you have a list somewhere of what you got in the grant or somewhere someone can find, like, where to purchase all of these things or, and um, what might be most popular out of all of them, if you know. Ooh. I think, you know, first, like, do you, is there somewhere where someone can see what everything you got in the um, grant or where you got Julie it? Julie Bino at Bennett Martin is probably the best person to ask. Okay. Contact Julie Bino. Yeah. And I would say the most popular is probably the robots. Oh, always the robots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Lego Mindstorm stuff, Dash and Dot. Yeah. 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 Ozobots. Ozobots. Are fun. Yeah. Dot Ozobots and Dash. Are anything yeah. robot related. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I even had fun with those. <laughs> <laughs> well, and a lot of these things are, are, you know, the, it's fabulous to have in the library because these are cost prohibitive to some people, yes. you know, so they, they are a little bit higher. I mean, a lot of people do have them on their own, mm -hmm. but they are a higher ticket item. And so it's mm -hmm. great for libraries to be able to yeah. share those sources with other people. Definitely. So Julie was in charge of the grant then? That's okay. So yeah, yeah Julie Bino at Ben and Martin, look, look, up, look her up. You can find her <laughs> online anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, so here's the Makey Makey. This is at the same open house that we showed a couple of pictures of earlier. Um, this young man made a banana mm -hmm. piano with the Makey Makey. Wow. Okay. And mm -hmm. then um, on the right here, um, I think is the is the synth, the little bit synth. And then mm -hmm. in that same picture in the upper left is a mm -hmm. 3D printed violin wow. that we were able to borrow. And we had a strolling musician walking around playing the 3D violin. So that just is, we did not print that at Lincoln City Libraries. It was no, loaned okay. to us for the day. <laughs> but yes, you really could play music on bananas. Yes, yeah, you really, really could. You really cool. could, yes. Yeah. Um, here's, a, here's some of the card games that we got with the grant. And those, um, some of those were for teens, and we have used those with teens after school. But some of those are for preschoolers, and mm -hmm. we did have those at our creative play. 
Um, on the right here is a picture of the Ozobots. And we did have a robot dance-off using our <laughs> Ozobots. And um, that was for ages um, K th kindergarten through fifth grade. And so what we did with that is we had the kids come in. And in the upper left here, you can see one of our staff members, Becca, teaching some probably first and second graders how to write code in Ozoblocky on an iPad. And then we had four teams who wrote some programming code to have their Ozobots dance. And then each of the Ozobots took a turn on the dance floor. And we decided who, which Ozobot had the best <laughs> dance. The best moves. The best moves, <laughs> yes. And actually, everybody was a winner that day, so, so it was all good. But what it shows you is that these kids can write code. Oh, yeah, writers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it really keeps them interested, and it's a good skill for them to have. Um, we also, and here's our picture yeah. of Lego Mindstorms and Dot and Dash. And with our Lego Mindstorms at, at our branch, we did a program where the kids could learn to write code using the Lego code. Mm -hmm. And then um, they, they were well beyond me. With, I, had some, I had some challenges that they could do, and they were beyond me within like the first 10 minutes. And wow. they had, yeah. had this guy throwing balls and mm -hmm. running around and stuff it's like that. It's good to have a lot of these different uh, robots, too, because like you just were saying, the Lego language or the Ozo language, they're, they're all different. And yep. that's something good to learn that there's lots of different programming languages if you ever go into that for a career. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Everything's going to be a little you different. You almost yeah. need to know that at this point in time mm -hmm. to be able to advance. And, and when we got these, I did not know how to do any of this, and yeah. you just have to, you can look it up online, and there's tutorials. Oh, there's all sorts of things, yeah. And really, mm -hmm. once you start it, it's not that hard. Yeah. And, and work, the kids are so forgiving when you work with them. <laughs> or they'll teach you. Or they'll teach <laughs> yeah. you. And they love yeah, that. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what did we learn through this whole process? Um, it's First of all, the main thing is that it's OK to change your programming. You don't have to start out one way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's, what, that's what we're talking about with evolution. We started out small and low tech. Uh, we, evolved, um, it, we evolved in LMNOP when we took a look at what other people wanted and had those discussions with them. Um, and then that's evolved into becoming makerspaces and then following the library trend of the makerspaces. And we're lucky enough with at Lincoln City Libraries to have this grant and to be able to have this opportunity to expand it even further. So oh, yeah. things are just really going farther and farther that way. Um, the other thing that is very important is that it is the concept of engagement when you engage the people that you're working with, your patrons, when you talk to them, and when you engage with them as a staff person, you learn more about them and what they want. And when a program becomes meaningful for a person, they are enriched by that, and then they will get more out of it. They're going to want to come to your programs. They are going to give you feedback. But if they just come into your place and um, just get what they need and leave, Mm -hmm. There's really no interaction that way, and you can't mm -hmm. help each other. It's it's a mutual thing. So that both, way, both is a two-way street. Two-way street. Yeah, yeah. they're going to support you if if you can enrich them somehow. Mm -hmm. And another, besides just the book aspect, which is important, mm -hmm. you know, enrich them as a person through the programming. We found that that to to be very important. Um, if you give them programs that they're not going to be interested in, you're not going to have anybody showing up. You're not going to be able to have future support for any of your programming endeavors. Um, so that's really important to um, have them come back. You want to give them, um, we also want to give them options. You don't want to give them open-ended questions by saying, what kind of programs do you want? Sometimes it helps us to say, would you like to see a program about this? Would you like to see a program about that? Mm -hmm. Start with thinking about the programs that maybe you do want to show them and say, do you have interest in this? And you'll find out quickly whether or not they do or not. If they don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there we go. This is another oh, one of yeah. my favorite quotes. Mm -hmm. I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Thomas Edison. And if he wouldn't have kept going, we would be all in the dark. <laughs> you know, it would, it would be a really dark world that we'd be sitting in. So um, that just means try a program, see what works, see what works in your community because, mm -hmm. I mean, the things that we've talked to you about today might not always work in everyone's community. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what, what is great to do out there. It also is encouraging to the people coming to a creative program. We want you to try different things. We want you to see maybe you like 
sewing and you don't like um, Lego Mindstorms, but maybe somebody who is sewing hears about our Mindstorms program, which actually did happen. Yeah. We had them come and they said, oh, you've got more programs? Oh, you know, I, I think I'll give that a try and I'll bring my son. And they came and they find out that they love it mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have had that opportunity unless you have those discussions. So they can come and be creative at the same time. And then another fun one, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. So that just means keep trying, keep doing different things. Do different, yeah. If Try it's, something else. If it's not working for you, do something different. If it is working for you, keep going and expanding and seeing what else you can do. And that's by Albert Einstein. So mm. there we go. Okay. So thank you very much. And there's there's contact fun. info. Yes. And look for Julie Bino, too, if you need more about the grant mm. specifically and everything along with that. Um, okay, anybody have any other last minute questions you want to get in? Um, type them into the questions section. We already had some, of course, that I grabbed throughout as we're going. Because um, we're going to wrap this up in just a minute here. We're a little after 11 o'clock, but we started after 10, so that's fine. <laughs> um, and I, like I said, I attended the session at the conference. I thought it was really cool, the whole, all the different things that you're doing and, and just the switch to listening and to switch from it's for moms, but no, it's not. It's for everybody because nobody cares anymore what they're specifically <laughs> for. They'll just come to anything and then they'll, they'll make you change it. That's all good. <laughs> which, yeah. is, which is okay, which is the whole point, yeah. Um, so thank you very much, Judy and Vicki. That's great. And Leanne, remotely, wherever you are, feel better. <laughs> um, Looks like nothing is being typed in desperately right now, but you guys have their contact info. Um, reach out to them for any other, um, anything else you want to ask. Um, I have the presentation, so that's going to be posted later as well. So if you didn't want to know, if you didn't remember all the different names of all the different robots and things and, that they bought, it's all going to be in the presentation later that you'll be able to access um, along with the recording. So um, look for that. Um, so I think we'll, we will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you very much, guys. This was really fun. Um, I see more things that I want to attend, unfortunately. We <laughs> see what's coming up next. <laughs> um, I had to escape over there since we got the keyboard. There we go. All right, so that wraps up for today's show. And I'm going to show you here. Um, this is our Library Commission website where you can look for um, Encompass Live is under our education section. Encompass Live. Or you can just Google. Can you type Encompass Live on there? And so far in the world, we whoa. Oh, see, this is the thing. The keyboard's got issues. All right, try and back up and see if it'll. There we go. Okay. All one word or two? Two words. Yeah. We're the only thing called Encompass Live so far on the internet. <laughs> so you can just Google us as well, um, and you'll find our upcoming shows here. Our recordings, as I'm going to show you, go right below our upcoming list. Um, of shows. All of our archives are here. Um, here's last week's Building a Digital Image Collection with Flickr. We have the recording, the presentation, and any links that were mentioned. We'll have the same thing for today's show as well will be posted here. I'll let you all know when it's ready, um, probably sometime this afternoon, as long as YouTube cooperates with my uploading. Um, I'll email all of you to let you know when it's available. Um, so that will be there today. So I hope you join us for next week's show when our topic is collecting user feedback, free, high-tech, and low-tech options. Um, we have some presenters who are coming in remotely with to us um, from the University of Tennessee. Um, Adam Clemens and Jim Nance and yes, I'm Jim. That's it so far. Um, are going to be joining us. They've got some great ideas about how libraries can do surveys and get information from your users. Um, some of what you guys were probably looking for. How do you design a survey and um, you know, high tech? more expensive ways and maybe some low-tech easy things that you can do just to find out what your community wants, what they're looking for in your library. So um, sign up for that next week and any of our other topics that we have coming up here. I do have other things in May scheduled. I'm just confirming descriptions and things so you'll see more of that popping up on here as they get confirmed. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. If you are a big Facebook user, pop over there and give us a like. There we go. Um, there we go. No, we don't want to log in right now. Um, I post on here, um, which is a reminder for today's show to log in. Um, when our recordings are available, I post on here. There's the next one. There we go. Last week's recording. So if you're big on Facebook, give us a like, and you'll see, you'll get notified of what we're doing here on the show from over there. 
Other than that, that wraps it up. Thank you very much, guys, Thank for you. being Thank with you. here with us. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.